Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to simulate elastic rope using rigid body and cloth physics. Let's get started the lecture. Let's add a cube object. Press numpad 1 and switch to front view. Press shift D and duplicate the cube. Move the duplicated cube, and scale down on the z-axis. Press Alt-Z and switch to X-Ray mode. Let's add another cube, and scale down the cube enough. Move the cube to proper place. Duplicate the cube, and move it to proper place. Select the smaller cube, hold shift and select the bigger cube. So, the bigger cube will be active selection. Press Ctrl P, and set parent to object with keeping offset. So, if we try to move the bigger cube, the small cube will follow it. Set the other cubes in the same way. Let's add a rope between them. Add a plane. Press numpad 7 and switch to top view. Scale down the plane enough. Move the plane on the x-axis. Press tab key and switch to edit mode. Select these two vertices and move them on the x-axis. Switch to front view, hit the E key, and then Z key and extrude on the z-axis. Select this edge, press Ctrl B and bevel the edge. Set the segments number to 8. Switch to top view, press Ctrl R, and add loop cuts enough so that it will be equal quads. Select this edge, hit the double G key and slide down little bit. Now, let's assign pin group. Select the vertices inside the small cubes. Go to Object Data Properties tab, click on the plus button in the Vertex Group section. Rename the group as Pins. Set the vertex weights all the way up to 1, and click on the Assign button. Select these outside vertices also, and assign to pin group with 0.5 vertex weights. Now, let's add hook objects to grab these pin vertices. Select these pin vertices, go to Vertex menu, Hooks, and hook to new object. As you can see, it will be added empty object to grab. Select the other pin vertices, and hook to new object in the same way. Go back to object mode, and switch to solid view. Right click and make shade smooth. Now, let's add cloth physic for the rope. Click on the physics properties tab and add cloth physic. Click on the cloth presets, and choose the leather. As you can see, the cloth physical properties has changed automatically. We don't need to set manually. If you want, you can watch the tutorial about all cloth simulation settings. Scroll down to shape section, and select the pin group we have just created. Go to collision section, and set the quality to 4 and set the collision distance to 0.03. Also enable the self-collision option. Finally, go to cache section, and set the final frame of the simulation to 500. Also set the render end frame to 500. Let's play the simulation. Simulation works properly. Let's select the hook object, and move it while the simulation plays at the same time. There we go. We have dynamic rope simulation now. It's really cool. We need to reset the simulation temporary cache, before restarting and making new dynamic simulation. To do this, select the rope, go over the active cache index, right click and reset to default value. 
let's make the cube's parent to hook objects. To do that, select the hook object, then select the cube, press Ctrl P, and set parent to object with keeping offset. There we go. We can simulate the rope by moving the cubes now. We can hide the empty objects in the viewport now. Select the empty objects, and hit the H key. Let's add solidify modifier and give some thickness for the rope. Select the rope, click on the modifier tab, and add solidify modifier. Increase the thickness value a little bit. Set the offset value to zero, so that it gives thickness just from center. Let's add subdivision surface modifier, and set the subdivision level to 2. Let's play the simulation and move the cube. It looks cool. But, the rope passed through the cube, it is not collide with the cube. We can add collision physic to the cubes. However, I will add rigid body to the cubes. In this case, it won't work because rigid body and cloth simulations almost cannot interact each other. To fix this problem, we will add a fake collision object, then hide it in viewport and render result. Let's add a new cube. Switch to X-ray mode. Scale up the new cube so that it contains other cube. Go to physics tab, and add collision physic. Hold down shift and select the inside cube. Press Ctrl P, and set parent to object with keeping offset. Then, go to outliner editor, and hide the collision cube in the viewport and render result. Finally, let's add collision physics for smaller cubes also. Let's play the simulation again, and see how it works. There we go. The problem has been solved. It is time to add rigid body physic. First of all, let's disable cloth modifier in the viewport for now. Click on the modifier tab, and disable the cloth modifier. Select the first cube, click on the physics properties tab, and add rigid body. This will be active rigid body. Select the other cube and add rigid body also. Switch the rigid body type to passive. Let's select the both cubes, go to object menu, go down to rigid body, and choose the connect. In this case, it will create constraint between the rigid bodies. As you can see, it has been added a empty object between them. Select the empty object, and switch the rigid body constraint type to generic spring. Scroll down to spring section, and enable all boxes angular and linear. Let's play the simulation. As you can see, the cube swings as if there is a spring between them. But, we need to change pivot point. Select the empty object, move it to center of the other cube. Play the simulation again. It works properly. Now, let's select the rope, and enable the cloth modifier again. Play the simulation again. There we go. It looks cool, and works properly. However, it stops at frame 250. To fix this problem, click on the Scene Properties tab, go to Rigid Body World section, Cache, and set the end frame of the simulation to 500. Then, select the rope, click on the Physics Properties tab, go to Cache section, and bake all dynamics. In this case, cloth and rigid body simulations will be baked together.
It is time to render. I will use Eevee for faster animation rendering. Click on the Render Properties tab, and switch to Eevee Render Engine. Turn on the Ambient Occlusion and Screen Space Reflections. Scroll down to Color Management, and switch to Very High Contrast. Switch to Render Preview Mode. For lighting, click on the World Properties tab, and add an HDRI image. Switch the Timeline Editor to Shader Editor. Select the cube, click on the New button and add new material. In the same way assign materials for other objects. Now, let's rotate the HDRI image to have a good camera view. Switch to Shader Editor Mode to World. Select the image texture, and press Ctrl T. Be sure that Node Wrangler add-on is enabled. Otherwise it won't work. Rotate the image on the x-axis, and adjust proper perspective. Let's add a camera, and press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 and align the camera to view. After adjusting proper perspective, click on the Output Properties tab. Set the resolution to 1080 pixels. Scroll down to Output section, and choose the folder you want to save the animation. Set the file format to AVI JPEG. Go to Render Menu, and Render Animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.